Speed limit. Nice. Go-karting has a special place in my heart. It is the place that we would go every single summer when we were traveling to our grandparents' house when we were kids. Also, growing up with two brothers, we got very competitive, especially with Mario Kart. So this was the closest thing that we could get to. Also watching those epic car chases and action movies are things like Fast and Furious before it was about beyond superhuman driving skills. Superheroes with cars, basically. A simpler time when we thought whoever could hold the gas pedal down the longest was going to be the winner. You take these sick drifts around the tracks, even though it wasn't faster, but it did feel cool. I've gotten go-karting a couple of times as an adult now. So is go-karting actually worth it? Or is it just a nostalgic memory that I should just keep in there? We're both about to find out. Welcome to my channel, attacking different challenges and adventures, telling my personal thoughts and experience, and hopefully that encourages you to take on adventures yourself. Now, if that's something that pops your cork, maybe consider liking and subscribing, but let's get into go-karting and if it's even worth it. Let's get one of the debates out of the way, indoor versus outdoor go-karting, and what's the difference? Outdoor go-karting generally has bigger and longer tracks. Bigger is better. Am I right, boys? And they tend to have more variety. I remember the one in Quebec that we used to go to. Oh, wee oui, wee. Oui. The Quebec tracks. I am actually am French. I can do a better French accent than that. Those ones had three different tracks. They had the My First Go-Kart track, which was for people who could even drive a toy car properly. Then you had the kid tracks, like the average one, family friendly one, just a lot bigger. Or you had the big boy Vin Diesel approved super fast racing tracks were huge, which I never got to try. Huh? Outside just feels more authentic. It feels more like an actual race versus indoor. It feels more like a head-to-head -head race, like you're actually on a road. And like I said, the best way to describe it is it just feels more authentic. Indoor go-karting is definitely not hooked on the same feeling. A lot of times these places will bribe you with saying how fast the go-karts are, like saying they're 60 kilometers an hour or so on and so forth. But that speed can only help so much if the track just feels a lot smaller or something just feels very repetitive. Like I said, it's inside. It will control the weather a lot better. So you can do that season around. If you just want to yeah, feel like you're going fast, then get a driver's license and go on the highway. Now, this is not for every single go-karting place. Obviously, there are some that are outside that are at these arcade places or these family fun parks where they're a lot smaller and sometimes indoor, they just have a giant warehouse and they use the whole thing. The main difference, regardless of size, is that authenticity feeling. But regardless of you doing indoor or outdoor, what is the general experience that you're gonna have on either one of them? On average, they're about 20 to 30 bucks per race. A lot of places are starting to have these memberships. They're like 10, 20, 30 bucks throughout the year. But you do get a free race on your birthday, which is pretty nice. And you usually get cheaper deals. So if you know you're gonna at least twice, you might as well get it. Then on your birthday, you go for a free race. Your friends have to pay. So hmm, that's how they make their money. Oh, that makes sense. The more races you get, the more money you're gonna have to spend. The experience of how long you were on the course for just one race doesn't really feel that long. It's almost the orientation is just as long as your actual race. And in that orientation, you're always gonna go into this room and they're gonna show you this cinematic movie about the rules and the laws of go-karting. Just the how it works, picking your helmet, getting to your cart, one of the different flags, which I still don't remember, even though I've gone go-karting a couple of times. I only remember the go as fast as you can one and the, ooh, we're done now. There's a bunch of other ones like slow down, there's a mechanical error, there are some places that tell you that if you're going faster, then the person in front of you should let them pass and the other way around. Sometimes it's just go. Then you wear your balaclava or you can bring your own if you're a skier or you like to go in a lot of different banks. And then you get on your fancy schmancy helmet. Then they give you your cart and a lot of times you don't really get to choose. They kind of just put you in a row so that when you finish the cart, you can just come back. If you ask the workers really nicely which ones are the fastest, there's usually one or two that, because they're electric, sometimes the battery or however it works, how it's fully charged, there's usually them that are a little bit faster. You just gotta ask and you just gotta be nice. Then you zip around the track a couple of times. On average, it's about 12 to 
14 laps. The faster you go, the better your time is, which means you might actually spend less time on the track, which is ironic. Some places will track and time your laps. So instead of your position in the race, everyone's laps are timed and then you get to see who was actually the fastest going around the tracks. Regardless, you're always gonna try to pass the person in front of you, even if they do that system, because you want that feeling of passing, of racing, of feeling like you're getting closer to that first place position, regardless of that's actually might be killing your time. Some places don't even track it. A lot of times it's kind of just go and you have to feel like who's in first and who's in second. My brothers had a lot of debates on who actually won the race or not. And we have to ask the referee, my mom or dad, to bring up the footage so we can maybe see who was first, second, and third. Look, if you're gonna stand on those podiums, it has to be honest. And if you wanna be in first place, here are some tips if you're going go-karting. You wanna make your line around the track as straight as possible. So if you have two curves, if you can make that line straight, a car is faster going straight than it is turning. Straighter the line, the better. The tighter the curve, you wanna hug that curve. Oh, a nice, sweet, warm embrace to get around that as fast as possible. Because a lot of times what you're gonna try to do is drifting. Is it fun? Yeah. Is it cool? Obviously. Are you gonna do it? Probably should do it at least once or twice. Is it faster? Absolutely not. No, it is, it is not faster. There are such specific situations in which drifting is faster. A lot of times, it's not. And don't smack into people. Like, your cart will go slower too. And just watch out for the other obvious stuff like blue shells, bananas, people with mushrooms, you know, just, just the usual go-karting stuff. That was the general experience and also how you can just improve your go-karting skills just a little bit more. But is it actually worth it? And let's explain it the best way possible, which is the pros and cons list. The pros. You do get to feel fast, like a speed racer, especially the bigger the track, the better it is. But I also found that speed only is such a small factor in the actual go-karting experience. One of those slower ones at the dinky fair. Sorry, that's not fair. Speed only went so far, but you get to feel like you're going fast. And there's a good feeling about crushing those kids. And the reason why kids can go is very family oriented. You can go as a group or as a family and you can insert your dominance by overlapping those darn kids. There's definitely an egotistic satisfaction crushing noobs, and I know that's definitely not a good thing. You know, you don't want to live life with such an ego, but it does feel good, and I think I need to think about that a lot. But going as a kid, it does feel very nostalgic. The more of those adventures you do as a kid, the more they really stick into your brain. And drifting is fun, that fast and furious thing. It's something that you wouldn't be able to do in your normal car without getting in trouble or you're an actual other racer. And yeah, there's other examples, but in general, if you're driving down the highway and you're missing your exit, you're not gonna drift in order to take it out. When you're outside and when you have a big track, that definitely feels great. And when there's a big group, that feels more fun. Almost anything that's competitive, it almost feels better to go as a group. There's a lot of things that are very fun to do as a group, but not a lot that is more fun when you're doing it alone. But the cons. You want to do more races. If you're trying to save money and you go for only one race for each person, it goes by so quickly because you're so fast. And the smaller the track, the more repetitive it is. If you can pay for one race at a really big track, then that gets more worth it. But the smaller it is, the less races that you do, the more boring it gets. And it's well, repetitive. I mean, obviously you're just going around in circles. What gets rid of that repetitive nature, it's the competitive nature of the group. If you're in a small group and you're going at an off time, it's not that fun. If you're a group of two to four, you miss out on that authenticity. It's one of those times you actually want to go when it's busier. Going with my girlfriend, we went at a not busy time and it was only two of us on the track and it was fun, but it wasn't. That's not what we were there for. It's like playing Mario Kart on your own with just one person and no NPCs, nothing. Yeah, you can see how fast you can go through the track, but that's not really the point of the whole thing. So depending on it, you are going to want to do more races, but then it gets more expensive the more races you get versus spending about 20 bucks per person. You might end up paying 
50, 60, 70 bucks per person in order to just get more races in there. The speed only helps so much. It really comes down more to the track because you can have an awesome track and slow carts. A small, uninteresting track with fast carts. The only thing you really do is just be a drift master. Being an adult who drives a car, ooh, so fancy, and driving down the highway, already feeling those high speeds, go-karts don't match it. It's only the fact that it's smaller and you're in the air. So if you can do that outside, but inside, I've gone faster and it's nothing like Mario Kart. There's no items, there's no shortcuts. You don't even get that cloudy guy that picks you up when you crash. There's just some guy who just pushes you back into the thing. Come on. Overall, I'll give it a come on gang type of rating. It's better as a group. You can step outside of your comfort zone really easily, but it's one of the things that you have to pay for and they get more expensive and it's really based on the location. Get outside, bigger tracks, vroom vroom now for whatever reason you want your own little go-kart toy that actually works i put a link to amazon so that you can buy one of those suckers yourself it's not one of those super fast ones as a kid's toy but i also have links to airbnb and groupon which is what i use to save money on a lot of experiences which is where i find a lot of my adventures but that's my experience. What do you think? Have you tried go-karting before? Am I missing out on something? Are you a go-karting expert or racer and there's something to make it more authentic and real? Or are you like me where it's a very great nostalgic feeling, but it can take a side seat compared to a lot of the other adventures. If you enjoyed it, consider liking and subscribing because I'd love you. Whoa, that went really fast. I will see you at the next adventure.